Hi, I'm Craig. Welcome back to uh, Easy Home Brewing. Um, in my first two videos, I showed you how easy it was to make a batch of home brew. Um, if you watched those two parts, you saw me make this batch of beer. This is actually the same batch that I made on those videos. It's been sitting here for exactly one week, and it's been fermenting, and now it's ready to put into bottles. Now, this particular episode, I'm going to be doing a lot of explaining of things. So if you already know how, how brewing works, and you know, if you already know about a lot of the equipment that you use, you might want to just skip to part four, because that's where I'm actually going to do the bottling. But in this video, I just want to explain how this works, and I want to show you what you'll need to do this. Okay, let's go over the equipment you're going to need here. Um, in the last two videos I did, you already saw this thing, which is a, just basically a piece of hose that screws onto my laundry uh, tap. I use this for washing things and rinsing things off. So you already saw that. You already saw the funnel, and you already saw the sterilizing solution. This is what I'm going to use to wash my bottles out with. It's also what I use to clean out my brew pail. And this is the funnel I use to pour the stuff back into here because this is re it's reusable. Okay, so you saw those last week. Now, um, this thing. First of all, you're going to need bottles. Now I use plastic bottles, um, and and I use the caps that screw on. Um, these are um, about one and a half times the size of a regular uh, beer, and I find these much easier than using one of these. And you can tell how long it's been since I've used this because it's it's terribly filthy dirty. And actually, before I used that, I used this. This is an old one my grandfather used to use when he made beer. And I actually did use this for quite some time. Now, instead of fiddling around with caps and bottles and pushing these things onto the bottles and everything else, I just used these. These are easy. There's less of them because it's one and a half times the size of a bottle of beer. So you're actually doing less bottles. And when you're done filling the bottle, you just screw on the lid, give it a little shake, you're done. It's really, really simple. Okay, so that's those. This is, as you saw, this is a, a, a bottle sterilizer. What you do is you pour the sterilizing solution into here. You put the bottle on top. You do that a few times. And it shoots the sterilizing solution up into the bottle and washes the, it sterilizes the bottle. These bottles, by the way, are all already cleaned. I uh, clean them after I pour the beers. I don't leave them with beer in the bottom of them. Um, so they're clean already. We're just going to sterilize them and rinse them. Okay. Uh, These are just a few things I have. This is a funnel. This is a smaller funnel. Um, what I used to put the sugar into my bottles, and we'll talk about that in a minute. This is the little half teaspoon that I used to put the sugar into the funnel that goes into the bottles. This is a little, just a little bowl that I put the sugar in when I'm doing that. And a strainer just to rinse off my bottle caps before I use them. You'll see all that in a minute. Just a little bit of sugar that's left over from when I bought, when I made the brew. You need a little, just a little bit, just a little bit in the bottom. You just need that little bit to uh, to, uh, to put in each bottle. And again, I'll explain that to you in a minute because there's different ways of doing this. This here, when you're finished um, pouring your beer, what you do is you leave this on your tap down the basement or wherever, and every time you finish pouring your beer, you just turn the water on, you put the bottle on top like this, it squirts water into the bottle, cleans the bottle. It's also handy when you're bottling like this because again, much easier to rinse out your bottles this way than it is to put them under a tap and dump them out and do all that stuff, okay? This thing here is finally this thing. Uh, I don't know how what I would do without this. Some people are. I've seen some of you guys out there are actually putting the bottle up to the little tap on the bottom of your brew pail, and and turning on the little tap and filling the bottle. And you know I've done that, but this is so much easier. You just attach this onto the tap of your brew bu uh, bucket. Okay. You turn on the tap. This has a little valve at the end of it. it the beer won't come out until you put it into the bottle and press it down onto the bottom. The beer will come out, it will fill the bottle. When the beer gets to the top of the bottle, you pull it out, the beer stops flowing, and the beer will end up at the perfect level inside the bottle. Then you screw on the cap, give it a little shake, you're done. Okay? So this thing is a very handy thing to have. The only other thing that I use, and this is just silly, but when I'm screwing on my caps, I notice that I get you know a little bit of red on my hand. It's, you know, it gets a little sore after a while. So it's just a piece of rubber. 
it just helps me screw the caps on and I'm not hurting my, my hand or whatever. So that's the stuff that, um, that I used to do this. Now, the way this works, and for you, who, for you guys who know all this, you can skip to part four if you want. But this video and this series of videos is actually originally done for people who have never brewed beer before and who are actually wondering, well, you know, can I do this? And perhaps they've watched some of the videos on YouTube and thought, oh, geez, I don't know, I've got to get all these pumps and hoses and things, you know. You know no, you don't need that stuff, really. And, of course, if you want to do that later on and get a little more elaborate, that's fine. I mean, to each his own. But just to start off and learn how to make the beer in the beginning, in the way, easy way that I do it, this is all you need. And that's what these videos are targeted for. This is what's happened, okay? We put yeast in the top of this thing, and we also mixed in quite a lot of dextrose, or sugar, um, in there. Now, what the yeast does, the yeast consumes the sugar. It actually uses it as a food. And of course, when something consumes something, it has to give off a waste. Well, what the yeast gives off as waste is carbon dioxide, and also as a byproduct, alcohol. So that's how you get the alcohol into your beer. The carbon dioxide escapes out of this um, little valve here um, into the air. We don't want that to happen in this next stage, because what you're going to do you're going to put a tiny little sugar in the bottom of each of these bottles, okay? Right now, there's no more sugar left in the, in, the, in the bucket here. There's no more sugar left. The yeast is just sitting there. It's not doing anything. You put a little bit of sugar in the bottom of here, and you put your beer in, and you screw on the cap. The yeast says, oh, look, there's more, there's more food here, and it starts to consume that sugar. And, of course, as a, as a result, it gives off carbon dioxide. But this time, the carbon dioxide can't escape. It's sealed inside the bottle. So it can't get out. So what it's going to do is it's going to build up a pressure inside the bottle and it's actually going to have no choice but to force itself into the beer itself. And that's how you get the carbonation in your beer. And that's how this works. So you're adding a little more sugar to your, to your batch to make this happen. Now, some people, what they do is they get a secondary um, container, like a carboy, a glass, big glass bottle and they'll siphon the beer from here into there. They'll add the right amount of sugar to the entire batch of beer, and then they just fill their bottles, and they don't have to worry about putting the sugar into each individual bottle. To tell you the truth, I've done that, and it takes just as long, if not longer, than it does for me to whip 45, you know, spoonfuls of, sh spoonfuls of sugar into 45 bottles. It takes me about two to three minutes, and that's it. So you can do it with the glass carboy if you want, but I do it this way because I did it the other way before and it just took me longer than this. This is much sim simpler and easier. So there's that. So um, I think what we better do now is um, get started. Um, I'm going to show you how to sterilize and uh, clean your stuff up and how to get this started and how to do it. It's very simple. And um, so we're going to take a break and look for part four of this series and that's where we're going to start and actually do this. Okay? See ya.